Perfect. Are we good? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're excellent. We're Hi, everybody. Uh, Dave Lucas, uh, some of you might have seen me before, heard of me before I run 12 minute trading. Um, our philosophy at 12 minute trading is just what it says trading less than 12 minutes a day, making things easy. We are options sellers. So that's what we do. We sell options. We don't uh, don't buy. Um, you know, we collect that cash flow on a daily, weekly, monthly, uh, or even longer basis. And uh, really, what we do every day is just uh, print cash for ourselves and focus a lot on high probability trading, right? So high win rates um, and consistent cash flow. And so the uh, thing that I wanted to talk about with you guys today is um, how I look at markets, how I analyze charts, how I analyze a stock to make an entry and, and everything into. And I think you're going to find it pretty fascinating. We use um, what is called fractal energies. So uh, Doc Severson and I are are at 12 minute trading and we, uh, gosh, almost going on almost 15 years ago now, we were looking for a way to effectively know when a chart is ready to trend. Right, so when a chart's ready to to trend and a, uh, and move, we, we wanted to know that. We wanted to know when, hey, there's a big move coming, or a, a, even a short term move coming, you know, in a chart. And so we set out to kind of figure out a way to pattern that, track that, and we ultimately created this indicator you see at the bottom of my screen here, which is our fractal energy indicator, and, and it's really a, um, a customized Dara Vision coded, you know, version of the choppiness index, if you've ever heard of the choppiness index before. And it does a really good job of patterning when things are going to trend. Now, it doesn't tell us which way things are going to trend, but it does tell us like when things are going to trend and when to be ready for that sort of thing. And we call it fractal energy because we look at things on different time frames. So as I go through today, I'll show you from even the inside out, all the way down to a you know one day minute chart, all the way to like a monthly chart over twelve months or longer, and and how you can use these energies to your advantage. And so I will um, I'm going to start there and take you guys through just how um, to look at this and uh, understand how these things work, and then we can get into specific charts and I can show you how I use this to enter my trading. And I typically trade um, week to four weeks to six months out with my trades, um, where Doc spends a lot of time on daily trading, right? We've got a whole daily trading room that he and every day is live in where we're doing live trades in and out, you know, using these same strategies and stuff. So I've got to try the SPX up. I'm going to start there for today. So you can see here we are on the SPX. And I, a long time ago, figured out that the more things that we slap on a chart, the more indecisiveness we get, the less money we make. And so I really, really looked at how do I simplify things to um, create the most money for myself with the least amount of effort and work and the least amount of headache and risk. And what I found was there was a very, very distinct correlation between the Bollinger Bands and the Fractal Energies and Price. And so that's all I focus on. That's all I need to do everything that I do across all these different time frames. And so what you'll see is the Bollinger Bands. These are the standard Bollinger Bands. Obviously, we're looking at Thinkorswim. These are the standard Bollinger Bands that, that you can do in Thinkorswim. And this is the Fractal Energy. And so one thing you'll notice is that the Fractal Energy is, at least on my version here, is color-coded. And what that color code means is it's telling me and it's helping me with signals of where price is. So when price is within a certain uh, level of the lower Bollinger Band, I'm going to light up uh, yellow. If it's within a certain level of the upper Bollinger Band, it's going to light up this kind of magenta color. And this helps me to signal. One of my favorite entry points is when I see that the energy is burned out and we're on the lower Bollinger Band, because that means a trend has taken place, and it's probably due to go back the other way. And that's kind of how the energies work. Anytime you're up in this 60 range, like we are now, and we'll talk about kind of the impending move here, that means you're fully charged and ready to go. That means that, hey, this chart is ready to trend. And it's just fitting, right? It makes a lot of sense that it's ready to trend right before CPI, PPI, the first earnings releases of the quarter. It's amazing how that lines up. Conversely, when we get down around 35 to 30 and below, that's where we get into exhaustion. And you typically see things pause or go sideways um, at the levels they're at. So great example is, you know, we kicked off this trend right back here. 
right? This was the big November trend. We got to exhaustion, but then what did we do? We just printed sideways, printed sideways for a good couple weeks, right? Charging this thing back up. And then we took off again and we bled out the energy. And now what have we done? We've come back down. That's one of the fastest ways to charge up this energy is to go back the way you came, right? One of the longer ways is to go sideways and just go nowhere. But to pull back is one of the fastest ways to charge the energy up. And we did that to start the year. And now we're at this point, we are charged up and ready to trend again. And so what I usually use the Bollinger Bands for is to help me understand which way we may trend once we're at these levels. And so you can think of the Bollinger Bands kind of like the um, the ropes of a boxing ring, right? I like to think of it like, um, uh, you know, a boxer, right? He's getting, they're in the ring and the boxer gets pushed against the ropes. They bend, they don't break, but they throw the boxer back in the ring, right? And you can see that's what happens when you hit the Bollinger Bands, the bottom, the top, you know, typically you're going to get thrown back in the ring, right? Here, we're getting thrown back in here. We're getting thrown back in there. We rode the, the you know, we bend, but we don't break. We got thrown back in again, right? We got thrown back in again. We got up outside, we got thrown back in. And so that's how I look at the Bollinger Band. So it's really easy, like when we are exhausted on the bottom Bollinger Band, that's a great, that's why I love this setup because it's a great time to sell into that. Or if you're like a, if you're more of a, a regular options trader, or you just want to buy the stock, it's a great time to potentially buy some uh, calls or buy, you know, some shares to catch the run back the other way. Um, like me, I love to sell into this, right? I like to sell into the lows and sell deep out of the money, like put spreads or naked puts and that sort of thing when I see that. Um, conversely, when we're on like the upper Bollinger Band, right? And, you know, we're we're up there and we are exhausted. Usually that means we're going to work sideways, right? And that's what, or, or down. And that's what we've done. We've pulled back, walked sideways really effectively for a couple of weeks now. And that's a great time to maybe sell the call side if you want to do that, or if you want to sell covered calls on maybe a stock that you own. And you can kind of see this pattern that just kind of repeats itself over time. Look, here's again, upper Bollinger Band, exhausted out, great time to sell. Look what we did. We went the other way. Right. Same thing here. Upper Bollinger Band exhausted out. Look what we did. Went the other way. Right. Conversely, though, when you're in the middle of the range, like we are now, right, that's the only time where it makes it hard because I'm not on the upper band. I'm not on the lower band. Just like here, I'm not on the upper band and I'm not on the lower bands. See, I'm right here. And so, right now, for me, this is not a green light for anything. This is, uh, at least on this chart, this is for me to sit there and wait and see which way this energy moves. And so if it, it starts to release down, I can play that. If it starts to release up, I can play that. And so I just need to let that move come to me. And so it's that's the only time that's just not specifically definitive with the Bollinger Bands and, and the energies. But effectively what we've got, guys, on the S&P, and I guess the overall market, is we've got an impending pretty pretty decent size move that's going to come our way. These these daily chart swings can go for 150 to 200 points. And so we've got kind of one of those moves that's about to happen, right? So we're either going to take out the the highs, right, on this or we're going to do that that correction maybe that people have been talking about, which would wouldn't be a uh, uh, you know bad for this market. And there's some things that tell me that we could be leading to that correction. That's where the next step comes in, which is looking at the different time frames. So we just looked at the one-year daily chart. That's what we got up here. Now I'm going to look at the three-year weekly chart. And in look what we've got. We're on the upper Bollinger Band. We're completely exhausted. In fact, we're the most exhausted that we've been in three years on this chart. And so that tells me it's going to be really, really hard to push higher in earnest and hold it. We may release that daily energy higher. And if that happens, great. I don't think we can hold that though. I think we would have a pretty nasty correction back down because this energy is not going to support it. And you can think of these time frames, each one you go up in charge of the other. So the weekly is in charge of the daily. The monthly is in charge of the weekly. And we always use the, I guess the example of think of like the, um, the uh, grandparents, the parents, and the kids driving down the road in the station wagon, right? The kids are in the back and they get that energy and, the, you know, they they burn it out real fast. You know, they jump around and everything. The, and the parents finally say, hey, sit down, calm down. And the kids fall back asleep, right? And then 
you got the parents in the middle and they're, you know, they're, they're riding along and stuff, but maybe they start bickering or arguing about something. And then the grandparents tell them, Hey, you two cut it out, right? That's, that's the monthly chart kind of putting the weekly chart in check. So where we're at right now is we're kind of at one of these points where, you know, you can kind of see when we get an exhausted weekly chart, the things that can kind of happen, right? So that's, that's kind of where we have to be cautious for a longer time frame because these weekly swings, as you can see, can go 8, 10, 12 weeks or more in a direction. So when we get really exhausted, it's important to know that we've got that. And if you've got a daily chart that's really charged up, that could start that release back the other way to charge this chart back up. So that's kind of where we're at right now with uh, the S&P, the overall market, is that we're kind of in this position where this move by the daily is either going to be kind of that last shot up and kind of put the cherry on top of this move, because that'll take this even further into exhaustion, or it's going to be the catalyst to start kicking off the weekly chart recharging itself and coming back down. So that's kind of um, how you read this. And then if we want to go up one more time frame, we go to the monthly, and you can see that the monthly started its release, you know, the beginning of this last year, really. And you can see we we had a little bit of a pullback, that sideways action, right? We didn't go anywhere for about five months in the end and then kept going again. And that's bled this out, but we're only at 47 for the energy. You can see we've gone as low as down here in the 30s on this. And it can take a long time for this to bleed out. This can go, this really, a monthly swing can go 12 to 15 months. And so... This tells me that, hey, we're in an overall uptrend. We're in a bull, right? But on the weekly, we've probably gone a little too far or too fast. And so we need to either go sideways for a prolonged period of time, several months, or pull back from these levels, maybe put a small correction in, and it would make sense maybe down in this 4,600 level, right back to this level of support that we've got here, if you're a technical trader, right? Um, and, and then use that to start charging this up, maybe pull back, walk sideways here for a while, and then start the next trend upward. And then the daily chart tells me, hey, that we're ready for a, a move to start. So right now for me, it's just kind of hanging out till Friday to see uh, which way this daily swing starts to go and then take advantage, um, you know, with my new trades, uh, you know, that I'll set up like on the SPX and stuff for the next week and, and that sort of thing. So that's how you read the main time frames, the daily, the weekly, the monthly. Uh, just real quick, if you're an intraday trader, you can do like a one day, one minute. And these things move really quick. You can kind of see, hey, this was into exhaustion on the upper band and we had to walk sideways for a while before we charged up again, right? Versus we got charged up and we sold it all off, right? And so you could buy right here, ride it back up. So you can do this on, you know, intraday. You can do it, uh, you know, one day, five minute. If I'm day trading, I'll use this and I'll like sell into this move here, right? I'll sell maybe like at the money, have it run away, be out, right? Same thing when we get like up here and we, you know, we're, we're you know, getting to a point of exhaustion, like you're seeing here, sell into that at the money, you know, maybe a call spread or something and then have it run the other way. So if you want to day trade, it's, it's, a, it's a way to help you with your entries and everything too, using the Bollinger Bands and the energies like that. And you can keep going out to different time frames, five day, 15 minute. You can look at like the 10 day, 30 minute. Um, and, and, and that'll help you with where kind of the overall trend is going, right? Hourly charts and, and so on. So I, I have these different time frames that I look at for that. But the main ones for trading, the daily, weekly, and the monthly. So I will stop there just for questions for anybody from the audience on everything I just explained. So I don't know, uh, David, if they put them in the chat or if they, you know, have a questions area, but if there is, go ahead and ask them and I'll, I'll answer those and then we can start looking at some tickers. Make sure I'm seeing if there is anything. David, do they have access to chat for that? Yeah, it's in okay. the chat. I, no one has entered. No. Ah, TOS share for chart setup. Yeah, so uh, this is something we spent a long time perfecting, building. It's probably got, oh, I don't know, at least multiple six figures and figuring this out and stuff. So our students get it. Um, we don't just share it out to everybody. So... But if you're a student of 12-minute trading, you do get the chart set up for TOS. Good question, though.
You can use the regular Bollinger Bands in TOS, though. So, ah, Apple. Okay, so we'll take a look at Apple. Let's look at Apple. All right, so Apple's green light for me. If I'm if I'm trading like longer term, uh, I love to sell four to six months out on these type of things below. If I can get around the 52 week low, I do. Otherwise it's below as many levels of support that I can get. Now I've got specific rules that I use uh, on my trades. Uh, so like a five wide spread, I want to get at least uh, 70 bucks on a five wide spread. If it's 10 wide, I want to get at least, uh, you know, a uh, hundred dollars per spread that I do. So, you know, I've got specific rules that I have to uh, hit. So if we look at like the, um, the, let me see if I can, if it'll let me just share, it won't let me just do a screen. So I'll switch to here. But if I pull up Apple on the chains and I look at these levels here and I go out to, let's say, uh, uh, June, six months out, and I typically am selling around like a 10 delta. So you can see here's about a 10 delta. Um, you can see it's not paying enough for me. And this has always been a challenge with Apple. It's just the options aren't rich enough. Now, if you are somebody who um, is just day trading or looking to play the move on Apple, I would say it's a good time to uh, you know, add some shares or add some calls to it, right? This is due for kind of a rebound, but that's what the daily chart shows. Let's take a look and see what the weekly chart showing us on Apple. So you can see this has been a weekly move down, right? And it's, you know, probably in that range where it typically turns, right? It's been as low as this Bollinger Band. So, you know, I think if the overall market went lower, right, I think Apple would go with it. So we may see it come back down into this range down here. So that's something to be conscious of right now. Um, it's always good to look at where the overall markets are and in relation to regular stocks, right? So you may want to think about if uh, watching and see where things release to. Um, I think we'll we'll definitely know on the daily chart by the end of this week, probably on Thursday with CPI is when it'll start. So where that starts to go, that's probably where Apple's going to go. So you could probably wait at this point. Um, on the monthly chart, uh, you're looking at you know, about middle of the range. So it's kind of walking sideways. It's probably, it seems like it's range bound between 200 and 165-ish. Looks like where it's at. So, um, but definitely exhausted on the daily chart, um, on the lower Bollinger band. Um, definitely if you can, if you want to sell below like 165, good spot to do that. Even if it comes down some, you'll be in, you know, still be able to weather that storm and it'll turn around and go the other way. But this is probably due to run back, back higher. All right. Let's see what else I got here from you guys. Uh, MGM. Let's take a look at MGM. So MGM obviously is supercharged. Um, it may have earnings uh, right around the corner or something, but it is. It seems like it is. It is supercharged and ready to go. It's got a Bollinger Band squeeze. It's sitting right in the middle of the Bollinger Bands. This is one where you got to just let this thing start the the move. And I, I would say if it starts going above forty five, it definitely. If it starts going forty five, forty six, it's releasing higher. If it's down below forty two, then it's going lower. Uh, this will probably trend. I mean, the last trend you can see went from 39, 40-ish all the way up to uh, 45, so about six points. So you're looking at six points in kind of either direction here. Um, on the weekly, this thing, it's about the middle of the range. So it's still got some energy if it wants to continue this trend higher. But it certainly could turn around from here and start to charge this back up. Uh, from a monthly standpoint... Got a lot of energy left in the monthly. So if this is starting to swing higher on the monthly, you're going to look for really the breakout above 50-ish, um, 51 high, and start to break out above there and look for the energy to start going down here. And that would tell you that the, the monthly swing is in as well. Um, I can pull over. I can actually, well, I'll keep this chart up because I've got one where it's got all three time frames on it, but it's kind of squished together. Uh, let's see here. BAC. Oh. Charged up right up there around that 60 range, ready to go again in the middle of the road. So you kind of got to let it just, you know, tell us which way it's going to go. But up up towards 35, it's going, it's probably releasing higher. Down towards 32, it's releasing lower. The weekly chart on this sucker is pretty exhausted and it's hit the upper Bollinger Band. So that could mean that we are ready to pull back some and earnings could be that catalyst this week, you know, for that. Wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. Um, 
on off of earnings. Uh, looks like we've kind of run up into it, right? Remember, overall, the market is pretty darn tired. So um, it wouldn't be a surprise to see uh, the pullback. Um, and from a monthly standpoint, we really haven't gone anywhere in a while, right? We're kind of range bound between 25 and and 38 on this thing. You know, this is, these stocks are, are good if you are a long-term trader, want to do big, big iron condors, you know, and, and put them way out of the money on both sides. It's great because they, they kind of stay this range bound this way. Um, let's see, I'll go back to the daily chart. Who do we got next? JBL. Let's take a look at JBL. So here's uh, JBL. It's at 52, so it's charging back up. That's kind of what we saw here. It got exhausted and it's come down and it kind of leveled off here. Makes sense. It looks like it's got some support in this area right here. Been a kind of a weird chart, though, if you look at how this thing has been bouncing around the way that it has. Um, and so it's middle of the Bollinger Band, so it probably you know can break either way. The weekly chart may give us a little bit more insight. Okay, so the weekly chart looks like it's starting to roll over. Looks like it's starting to go up. We'll see. I think by the end of this week, you could see if this is uh, uh, start, you know, still green and this is starting to roll over. I usually count a trend in the weekly chart after it gets below 50. Because I've just seen too many times where, and I'll go back to the, um, the SBX to show you this. I've seen too many times where, see, you start to go. And then you don't go, <laughs> you know, you kind of walk sideways, right? And stay charged. And then you finally go, right? And so usually by the time we're right around this 50 mark, that's when you can see that, hey, this thing's trending and take advantage and, and that sort of thing. So usually when we're right below that 50 line is, is when it starts to, to really signal itself. Um, FIX. So look at FIX. Well, we're on the weekly. You can see we're kind of into exhaustion. Right. And that's kind of why we're probably pulling back some, right? Starting to charge it back up. Uh, and this is pretty much, you know, a lot of the market, right? Uh, we definitely have um come down to the lower Bollinger band. Haven't bleeded out all the energy, right? But you know, we've given up somewhere about in the middle of the range. So we certainly could continue a little bit lower, maybe down in this range, 185, 90 range. Um the energy could take us back up to 211 from here, but this is a good point where you might want to like look at selling into, right? This would be a good spot around 150, you know, below this this last low right here. If you're selling, if you're selling like, like longer term, if you're like me and like, hey, I'm gonna set it and forget it, you know, and sell it out, make myself a nice 10 percent or so, um, and let it go. That that's the level I'd look at. If you could get down here, that'd be awesome. But but I I doubt that it has that much, uh, as we like to say, jack in the chain uh, to be able to do that. Um, NBDA though is a whole nother animal altogether. I was selling on this thing in the last pullback, right? So this was a good, this was good to sell into here. This was obviously, you know, a, a great time to look at when this thing was charged, started releasing, kind of sold and followed this thing up. Now you can see what's happened though. This thing has really gone nuts to the upside. It's outside the Bollinger Bands. We're almost doing new exhaustion. This is setting up really perfectly if we pull back later this week to have this thing come collapsing back down into the range. And we see that happen. You know, we've seen that happen here. Look at it collapse back down. Um, you know, this this stock is just such a volatile stock with this. But outside the Bollinger Bands, guys, is a recipe for this thing to come back down. So if you want to play it to come back down, you know, 520 if you're buying puts, you know, it's probably a level to look at. Um, but you know, maybe even 500 if you want to buy cheaper. That's something to look at to come back down to. The weekly chart on this thing, pretty exhausted, right? So this is just really taking some of that energy out of it, right? So this is uh, this was something that I like too. When I see a like a weekly that is on the bottom Bollinger Band and fully charged, I like to let it release and take advantage. Conversely, you know, if a weekly is exhausted, you know, and that near that exhaustion range or on the bottom Bollinger Band, it's a good time to sell into it. Um, so... I was I was able to get uh, you know before we you know back in here when we were here I was able to sell down in the three hundreds on this thing, um, getting you know buck fifty per ten wide contract on this thing just like three to six months out. So and this thing's run away from it. You can uh, you know, buy those back for pennies, which is great. Just in you know span of a few weeks to a month or so. Um, but Nvidia definitely has gone pretty far. The weekly tells me it could go a little bit further up if it wants to, but it's gonna be hard to hold this. So this is one of those moves where I think some people are 
piling in, getting people to come along with them, and they're going to fade them back down. Um, on the monthly, you can see it, it got to exhaustion, charged itself back up, but it's still kind of in that exhaustion range. And so it, it may just, it may be up and then back down and kind of continue kind of this sideways action to uh, get it to charge back up over time. So it may be range about between like 450 and 550 or so for a while um, on this chart. Uh, let's see what else we got. Google. Uh, so here's Google. Um, you can see this is all just sideways action, kind of like what we saw in the SPX. We basically have gone nowhere for the better part of uh, almost a couple of weeks. So it's charged this chart up. So it's ready to trend. Um, I think earnings will obviously be a catalyst around this, and it probably will run up into earnings. A lot of times you see these stocks do that again. If the overall market doesn't really start to sell off, then this would go with it. Um, as far as the weekly chart goes, got a lot of energy in this thing. Basically, look, this has been just sideways action for a long time in Google. So this thing is ready to really trend in a big way in a different direction. So, or in a direction, I should say. Um, and so this, this is something to watch. This thing's probably going to, earnings may be a breakout for this. Um, if you look at the monthly, it's got a lot of energy too. This has been a, a pretty good trend, but you can see overall, this thing has gone nowhere for over a year, you know, year plus. This thing's really gone nowhere through all this. So that hasn't, you know, that's, this starts to bleed the energy out, but, but then we go back the other way and it charges it back up and we just haven't gone anywhere, but this looks to be like it's starting to break out. You know, we're at 49, we're starting to go, the bands are expanding. Uh, so I'd watch this weekly chart. I would watch where this weekly chart starts to break out. And if this thing starts to go outside the Bollinger Bands and, and run up this way and this energy starts to bleed down, then you can you got a pretty good idea where Google's going. Trends do start from the inside out. So if the daily does start to release higher, then that will kick in potentially to the month or the weekly and then the monthly. Um, so you, you do look for the trends to begin from the inside out. So that's Google. Uh, AGCO. This is another one's in the middle of the range. It is charged up though. So this thing's ready to move it, you know, and typically when these things get charged up guys, it's a matter of days before they start to trend. And then those trends, a daily chart trend, the last seven, eight, 10 trading days, weekly chart, as I said before, can be 10, 12, 15 weeks, monthly, 10, 12, 15 months. Um, so, you know, with probably by the end of the week, you know, I think right now everything is hinging on what happens with CPI and uh, PPI at the end of the week here. And so I think a lot of these charts will really start to bleed their energy in either direction based upon that. Weekly, pretty darn charged up, but still haven't really started any major trend yet, right? So it's hard to tell. This is a big weekly squeeze on here. So the weekly bands don't squeeze like the daily do. This is about as you know much of a squeeze you're going to see. So this thing's ready to really go. Um, and then if I look at the monthly, wow, super charged up. So this stock, whichever way it chooses to go, is about to go on probably a year-long trend in that direction. So this is one of those ones where you don't have to be right. Just let it reveal itself and then play it and take advantage of it as it goes. Um, so, oh yeah, this thing is is definitely ready to, to run. I could see a high up at 140, low at, at uh, 109. So, you know, it's going to test either one of those off this move whichever way it decides to go, especially with the weekly chart and the monthly chart. So be prepared for that if you're trading this. Uh, I think overall, as I've said, we are in a a, uh, a bull market as of now. Um, and the the larger the, you know, the indices and everything confirm that, but that doesn't, bull markets don't uh, just go straight up. They have pullbacks, but I could see us being in a quiet and trending market this year. It's an election year. So maybe we get this small corrective, you know, four to six, maybe 8% here in the first quarter. And then that cements the higher low on the charts. And then we just grind higher through the election and then probably break higher, you know, or break in a direction after the election. But I, I would think that the markets would be positive after the election either way, because the markets just love certainty. You know, I think the biggest thing to watch is earnings overall with these stocks, because remember the market's a forward-looking instrument 
It's always pricing on what it believes the future earnings are going to be. That's one of the reasons we got the run at the end of the year. If rates are going to come down, that helps earnings, right? So um, that's why we got that run. But now we're, you know, we've uh, we've kind of, all that's priced in. So what now? You know, it's like uh, the market's got everything. It's priced to perfection. So if there's any any bad news or anything negative, it, that's just a, an easy excuse to sell um, and take some of those profits off the table. And we saw some of that for the beginning of the year too. Um, LABU. So, uh, all right. So biotech, uh, biotech's volatile, but you can see we've had a, a pretty nice run on this thing on the daily chart. It's probably coincided with a pretty decent swing on the, the, uh, weekly chart. Pull that up a little bit. Um, the monthly chart on this, we'll take a look, see what we got. Um, it's basically been printing sideways for a good long time in this range. It looks like doesn't look like there's that many months to go off here, but it's certainly, uh, certainly had a decent run, but it seems to be kind of uh, range bound and it looks like we're releasing higher right now. That's what this is telling me. This thing's going higher. So you could uh, sell puts, put spreads against it, follow it up, um, you know, or just take advantage, maybe buy and buy shares or calls. Uh, you can do a nice wheel strategy on it, buy shares at the money, sell covered calls at the money, probably make a lot of money on this thing right now. Um, cure. And there's the other side. So this thing's pretty exhausted. So you can see that this thing's really burned itself out, gotten to exhaustion. But it looks like the pullbacks are small as this thing, you know, continues to grind higher, small pullback to recharge, small pullback to recharge. Let's take a look at the weekly. Weekly's getting pretty exhausted. That would make sense. You can see we're outside the Bollinger Band. So that... That tells me this is probably due for a little bit of a break due to either go sideways for a little while or or have a nice little pullback, maybe to 100, you know, 95 to 100 range. So I'd watch the weekly, see what happens here. Watch the watch to see what it does around these Bollinger Bands. Uh, monthly looks like it is releasing higher, though, overall. So it looks like the trend is starting to release higher overall. Um, so that's Cure. Take a look at PLTR. Um, decent setup on this you can see it's a uh, lower bollinger band getting to exhaustion it's kind of leveled off right it went outside it's popped back in it's found some support right it's a good spot to maybe look at uh you know entering like for me again selling puts into this selling put spreads into this um if you're wanting to just buy calls on it it's not a bad time to look at that so you can look at the weekly chart um it's got some energy in it still it's in the middle of the range really hasn't gone anywhere for a while and that's kind of why we you know, it looks like we started to release and then we've kind of come back up a little bit, right? And we've kind of stayed range bound ever since back here. You can see we're kind of in the same line. Um, so look for, you know, I, I would say the above the moving average is good. And this is the standard moving average. So it looks like around 17 and change. Good spot. To, if it starts to creep above there, it's going to probably continue going. Um, uh, not enough on the monthly, though. It's hard to tell on the monthly, just not enough uh, data. Uh, let's take a look at Meta. So Meta is kind of the same thing, right? We get these energy bursts on the daily. We pull back. That charges up. Energy burst, pull back. We're now charged back up. Things getting ready. All these guys are going to, you'll see, it's it's kind of a, it's funny how it happens, but all these guys with energies typically swell into earnings, right? They typically get fully charged into earnings, whether by going sideways or, you know, they, they've got, they've been sold off some. And so they're getting run up into earnings and it's sideways action. But this is uh, charged up now and uh, getting ready. It's not quite there, right? I think it's got a little more room to go. So you could see a little bit more red on it before it's fully charged. On the weekly, it has, you know, like a lot of these charts, burned out a lot of the weekly energy, but it's still got some room to go. It can go, you know, another probably 20 or so points to the, the upside if it wants to, or it can start pulling back here. Um, you can see it's done that type of corrective action before. Back here, it's this is the furthest it's gotten, and then it's charged itself back up. Again, I think a lot hinges on what the overall market's about to do. And so that's a key thing to watch. The overall market starts going down. A lot of these stocks will go with it. Um, and then monthly, you can see it's pretty darn exhausted. So I would think that I, I wouldn't be surprised to see meta range bound probably in a 50 or so point range 
for for a while unless we get a pretty nasty pullback like below 300 here see this level of support you know down to here and below even undercutting it um and that wouldn't be a big deal on a monthly chart right pulling back to like the moving average on a monthly chart is normal to setting up a higher low that you can go higher from so that's again you know going back to that SPX chart just while we you know we're talking about it this is this is some seriously dead you know energy in a chart this thing has really exhausted itself and so a correction off of this like i said 468% would be pretty normal i mean 10 to 15% would be really normal i mean 4487 is the you know the the moving average here um and so even pulling back 300 points down into this you set up a higher low and go higher from here. That would be really normal. And you can actually see historically when we're in kind of those quiet and trending markets, pulling back to the moving average level is a normal thing to see with the, the biggest corrections being right in that range. So it would not surprise me to see us pull back into this range here, cement that um, uh, higher low and then go from there. And if, but if that happens, markets are going to go with it. If you, you can do the same thing looking at like the NASDAQ, right? So here's the NDX. Right. And it's, you know, it's getting to that level where it's at the top three most exhausted it's been in, in the last three years. So pulling back to 15,500, that would not be a, I mean, we were just down to what, 16,200 the other day. So what's another 700 points for this thing to get down into there and find that, that higher low and, and, and bounce off there. And again, this was notorious for it back before the bear. Right. This was notorious to see this thing do these corrections down to this level and then break off of them. So, again, we're getting back into this type of market. Realistically, I, that wouldn't be a big thing at all to see. So um, but it doesn't happen to happen tomorrow. It doesn't have to happen next week. It doesn't, could happen in March, could happen whenever um, it could happen as early as next week and start. But I think uh, time will have to tell on that. It'll it'll happen when people least expect it. <laughs> That's how markets work. Right. So, um, but that's just uh, something you got to keep, you got to, you know, it's always good to understand the overall market and then look at that in the context of the individual stocks too. It's one of the reasons I love selling puts and put spreads, uh, spreads because, you know, if I can come in and get something on the lower Bollinger band and sell deep out of the money on that, you know, chances are, even if it goes down, you know, further and stuff, I'm going to be okay and safe. And, you know, I'm not going to have to do anything with the trade, right? So, um, in fact, there's one I am watching. I was watching today. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, after hours is AEHR. I don't know what it did. Looks like we had a nice drop after market. We're down at 18. So I've been watching this stock because if you can see, this stock was on the lower Bollinger Band. It was pretty exhausted, right? And I knew it had earnings. One of my rules, I never enter in the within two weeks of leading up to earnings. I always wait for earnings to happen. And so, as you can see, this thing, you know, it was already there and, you know, it, it, its energy was starting to charge up, but it still could go lower. It's been as low as a buck 94. So I've been looking at, Hey, can I get in this thing at like 10 back down around here where this, um, you know, this, this, uh, level of support was. And so I was wondering if it would sell, you know, after market off of earnings and, and it's done it, it's gone down to 18. It went from 23 to 18. So, you know, I may look at uh, tomorrow, if I can pull up the options chains on this thing, um, looking for an entry point in AEHR, um, you know, even like out to June or March or something, you can see right now the 1250 is a buck oh five. I guarantee you that thing's gonna be closer to maybe a buck 80, two bucks uh, tomorrow. And, and I take that, you know, I, I, I can I can do a version of the wheel strategy where I can buy a protective put on the backside cheap and if the thing drops more, it protects itself, you know. Um, same with, uh, you know, even uh, the March will be worth a lot more tomorrow and stuff. So um, so that's that's what I love to see. I love to see carnage like that. I love to see the bottom Bollinger Bands, the energy's exhausted, and it's just like Armageddon for a stock. And I love selling deep into that. You know, I love to sell if I can get below those levels of support or, you know, at those 52-week lows. Uh, I'll do that and then let it uh, either go sideways for a while or run away from it back the other way and, um, you know, get me in, uh, get me out of that. I'm usually in a trade. If I sell like six months out, you know, I'm usually in a trade for six to eight weeks. You know, I'm not in it for the full time. I'm usually buying it back for pennies uh, off that. So, um, and then when I trade like, you know, one of my 
bread and butter strategy is doing the same type of thing with iron condors on the indices on a monthly basis, you know, so I'll come in and I'll sell, um, just, I, I sell four weeks out, uh, basically iron condors on the SPX and the NDX. And, uh, I'm typically getting, you know, uh, you know, four to five percent return on risk, and the typical time on um, in that's less than two weeks, and it's just that's how I just print you know that monthly cash flow, um, and then we do that stuff like on a weekly basis. We take advantage of these swings, you know, that we get on the daily chart, and like sell into this uh, five days out, let it run away. You know, get up here, sell into this five days out, let it run away, um, or even the day of, as I, I've kind of shown before. So we kind of tackle all different. Uh, types uh, of uh, trading. We just love it, love doing it by selling, right? And we love selling because it puts the odds in our favor um, and you get paid up front to take on risk. Um, and so it's it's kind of uh, creating that cash flow machine. So that's kind of how we look at things. Um, any other tickers anybody want me to look at for you guys? Happy to do so. Pop them in there. See if I missed any. DC. We saw Apple. We did all that. Uh, AMAT, TNA, coin. <laughs> Here they come. Uh, all right. So let's take a look at IBM. All right. So, you know, IBM is lower ball in Japan, but it really hasn't released. So I, I have to, what was the last earnings on this thing? It's 1025. So earnings are coming up. I have to think this thing's probably going to stay kind of coiled up into earnings. You can see there's a pretty big squeeze on this thing. Um, and it's going to release off of earnings. Uh, the weekly is probably pretty exhausted, right? So like, that's the thing guys, all these stocks have, you know, have gotten to a point where they've exhausted their weekly. So earnings are like a really easy catalyst to sell off, right? So the daily chart can be charged up, but the weekly is exhausted. It, it's just really hard for them to continue trending that way. So I think a lot of these stocks, I think it's going to probably depend on guidance and stuff. I think some will it'll do well, but I think, you know, there's going to be some earning surprises coming our way and those are going to be catalysts to just sell these things. So I, I would be careful around earnings with this. I'd let earnings happen and then take advantage of it. But this thing is very, very exhausting. You can see the last time we did something like this was here and we had a pretty nasty, you know, corrective action in this thing, you know, all the way down to here. So be careful with IBM at these levels. Um, it's outside, just came outside the Bollinger Bands on the monthly. It's popped back in. That's pretty normal, but it's getting to, you can see this is the lowest, about the lowest point it's been energy-wise in the last five years. So wouldn't be surprised to see this thing come back down in this 140 range, kind of revert to the mean a little bit. Um, coin. Coin's going to be all over the place right now, guys, because of what's happening with the SEC. So, you know, this is going to, I mean, I, I think this is one of those instances, kind of like around earnings where, you know, like a daily energy isn't going to mean much because of, you know, the regulations and stuff in this case are like, it can make this thing worth 10 times as much, you know, if they're going to do things with the, uh, the uh, spot price, Bitcoin ETFs and, and that's sort of stuff. So I, I think this is one you just gotta, you just gotta hold on. I, I've actually been playing Riot a lot. I've been selling a lot like on Riot and Mara. I've been selling a lot of deep out of the money puts like six and seven dollars and getting 15, 20% on these pullbacks. Cause I do think overall Bitcoin's going to go up. In fact, you know, the, the best performing asset of the last decade is Bitcoin, um, you know, overall. So I, right now it's right at 50. It's got plenty of energy to trend either way. It's in the middle of the range. Um, go back to the weekly. It's pretty exhausted on the weekly. So that's why we kind of see it pulling back in, but I don't think it's going to matter if we get, you know, things approved. I think what would happen is this thing would just charge up over time and go kind of grinding up from an initial move on there. So we'll just have to see what ha happens with that space. It's kind of one of those really rare events, right? It just does. It happens, you know, like once in a lifetime of a stock. So we just have to be careful around coin right now. You could play it either way, though. At this point, you could buy a buy a call, buy a put, and just let it run either way it wants to go, and and let one win. Um, let's see here, TNA. All right, so small cap. Uh, you can see the small caps have pulled back. This is it coincides with the Russell. If you look, watch the Russell. 
Um, so it it's got some energy left, right? But one thing about small caps that I think is is typically interesting is a lot of times they lead the other indexes. I always look at the Russell or the IWM, kind of like the canary in the coal mine. So they and the reason being is small caps are are it's for these big players that move a lot of shares. These small caps, when when somebody starts seeing you move, you know, million shares and stuff out of a small cap, it's really noticeable. The volume's higher. Like people see that and they all jump in and, and try to follow what's going on and stuff. So like these bigger players, they'll do it slowly over time. And that's why a lot of times you'll see the Russell or the, uh, the you know, IWM move ahead of the market, whether down or up. It's kind of a good indicator. It's usually three to four weeks ahead a lot of times of the other indexes. Um, so just interesting to kind of see that, you know, we we're down below, you can see down below the moving average where these others haven't come down to it yet. So I wonder if that's kind of a, a precursor, you know, with the, the Russell and the IWM, but you can see we're at 47 of the energy. We seemingly come down. We could go a little bit lower. I think support around 32 around this lower band would be a good place to be. Um, from a weekly standpoint, it's pretty exhausted. I mean, it's the, you know, about the third lowest exhaustion in three years. So pulling back down here, you know, wouldn't be a big deal hitting this moving average. Um, and then uh, on a monthly, you know, it's got a lot of energy. And this is what we've seen with the, I mean, if I watch, I'll pull up the Russell chart and they looked pretty identical uh, if I can spell right. Um, so, I mean, fully charged energy, you know, weekly, pulled back some, get new exhaustion, the daily, you know, right down below that moving average. I mean, they look very, very similar. So, um, so I think I think the Russell has a chance to lead further. I I pegged it to undercut nineteen hundred if we were going to have more of a correction. So that's what I'd be looking for on this. So if you go back to TNA, that's that thirty two level. You know, down here about thirty two, something to look at on that. Um, let's see here, AMAT. T. There we go. So AMAT's in an interesting position, pulled back. I played this stock a number of times over the years. Um, it's definitely at the lower Bollinger Band. It's bled out some energy and it's at a level where it's turned around many times. It's gone further, but you know, it, it's just, it's in that range. If you go to and look at the weekly on this thing, interesting enough, it's staying above this moving average, right? And it's got plenty of energy in it. Earnings are when? Earnings will be, we still got some time on earnings. So there's a chance this thing could go running into earnings. Let's get the monthly. Monthly's charging back up. You know, this was all sideways action. It seems like, yeah, we basically haven't gone anywhere uh, for the better part of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months in this thing. That makes sense for this to charge back up. So on an AMAT, you know, selling at 130 or below, if you're following how I kind of do things, I'd be looking below there. Be a real sweet spot around 115 or, or below 110-ish if you could get there. Um, you did just check the options chain, see what you can do. But I think this definitely has uh, burned out a lot of that daily energy into this range. So I just don't know if it'll really turn around and go anywhere from here. It may do one of these for a little while, charge back up. I don't know if it's going to turn around and go running back the other way. Maybe an at the money put or buying, or again, buying and selling covered calls on it right around here. Wouldn't be a bad idea. You could do a wheel. You could, you know, buy, buy, sell out the money, cover calls, buy a defensive put as a uh, collar on it uh, short term. See if that works for you. Um, let's see here. RCL. Look at RCL. Uh, RCL. So pulled back. This was uh, this was really charging itself back up. Um, and this was, and this kind of did it middle of the range, but we're not really at a point where. It's hard to tell where this might release. It's at 46, so it's got some energy. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly's pretty exhausted. So what was the last earnings? 10, 26. So earnings is coming up. I'd, I'd wait I'd wait and watch and see what happens with that after earnings. I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing sell off on earnings. After a run like this, you know, kind of what we've been talking about. You can see back here, last time I did this, see it come back, charge itself up that way. Um, same thing here. You know, and in, in the opposite direction, it, it pulled it back, bled the energy and it went the opposite way. So this is kind of one of those things where I could see it pulling back, you know, again, kind of with the overall market. Uh, there may be a good entry opportunity if uh, if you're patient on this thing. 
I'll run through the monthly real quick. Monthly's pretty exhausted too. So it's going to be hard for this thing to go running much higher. Let's put it that way. I think the, the opportunity is going back the other way. Uh, LVS. LVS. Uh, all right, so we're near the upper Bollinger Band and we're pretty charged. So that's one you have to be careful with because this is where you can get the breakouts, right? So um, last time we were up there though, fully charged, we went the other way, which is common, but you can't get breakouts, especially if you have earnings coming up. And it looks like this thing probably has earnings. Yeah, coming up maybe in the next week or so. Um, looking at the weekly is fully charged. We got a squeeze on it. Um, the monthly... It's getting fully charged up and it's, you know, it's holding around this moving average. I, this is one that you may wait for earnings sale. This thing breaks. Um, I don't know if I'd do anything on this right now. Personally, I it wouldn't, this doesn't give me any uh, entry points. Um, so, uh, air. Wow. Now this one is really at a point where I'd be interested. So you can see it's come back down right in line with where all this support is. It's low as 45. It's exhausted. <laughs> it's all get out on the energy. Um, the weekly probably is pretty exhausted, right? Um, yep, it's at that level where it's been exhausted for a long time. Uh, at least that's the level it's hit consistently. Uh, it's, you know, come down. you got a nice moving average here, you know, is, that can act as support in this area. So this is one that if you're looking to pick up shares, this is a nice time to look at doing that. Um, I don't know what the options chains are. I can check those real quick and see what's in the options chains on this thing for you options traders out there. Uh, let's see here. So we can look at, uh, look at May. So, you know, there's not a ton in it. Maybe more buy some shares, sell the covered call right here out to May um, at 60. You know, it's sitting at 58. So you get $4.30, pick up another couple bucks on the way up. That's not bad. Uh, if you want to sell out the money puts, you can kind of see they're pricing in some upside here. So um, interesting. If you want to go out longer term, right? Think of it like a CD. You know, you can do it here and you could probably sell a put. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, and if you're going to go real close, January, you know, you could probably buy some shares, sell at the money calls right there at 60 or even... You know, uh, if it dropped a little bit more, you could sell the 55, but you could sell out the money calls and do all right for a couple of weeks. Just maybe buy a put on the backside, you know, to protect yourself with a collar type thing. It's uh, an option, but this definitely is a, you know, pretty decent setup. You know, if I was going to look at even 50 by 45, eh, it doesn't pay me enough for what I do, you know, going out that far. So I, I'd look at this more of a, a wheel strategy, buying shares, selling the covered call. Um, if I, if I like this stock and wanted to have some of it, I don't know if it pays a dividend. It does not. So, um, so you're not getting any extra juice for owning it, but it's definitely at a point where it's probably done heading lower, pretty close to it. Uh, let's see what else we got here. GBTC. GBTC. This is another one, guys. <laughs> this whole this whole Bitcoin thing, right? You know, this decision that could come down this week from the SEC on all this stuff is going to affect this greatly. So this is one that I, you know, kind of right now I can analyze it, but I, you know, I'd say you're kind of throwing, you need to throw it out the window and see what it does because it just couldn't do anything with uh, with that. Uh, the daily, you can see though, it's at 49. Looks like it's releasing higher, right? Uh, the weekly is pretty exhausted. It's been a heck of a run, right? All these stocks are. So you can look at, I mean, you know, I'll show you a riot here in a second, but, you know, monthly, way outside the Bollinger Bands and exhausted. So again, maybe it's a sell the news event, right? But who knows, right? With with Bitcoin and the SEC. So kind of, I, I, I personally wouldn't be trading this one right now. Um, I have expected the SEC to approve things. So what I started doing back here was building in positions on Riot. So like I said, I was selling like six and four dollar puts on this thing um, and then kind of averaged in as we went up and then uh, was buying shares and selling covered calls uh, into this. So I think my my cost basis on my shares overall right now is around seven. 
Um, so I'll just keep doing that. And after another couple of rounds, I'll actually be playing with the house's money. Something I love to do is just use my covered calls, naked puts to effectively get to a point where it's pure profit, everything I do uh, on shares when I'm building a position in something. So, but this same thing, this is going to go, you know, either way. Um, it's got the energy to go up again or down again, based upon what happens with um, uh, this, this whole Bitcoin decision, right? And you can see energy about smack dab in the middle. It could go all the way down again. It can go back up. Uh, and if I look at the monthly, you can see that, you know, it's got plenty of energy to the monthly. So again, remember the time frames, right? Grandparents on the monthly, they're ultimately in control. So if this thing starts releasing higher and going down, that weekly is going to go with it. And that daily is ultimately going to go with it. So that, that really comes into play, I think, with these Bitcoin related, crypto related stocks right now in, you know, with the pending SEC decision and everything. So um, see if there's any others. Looks like INTC, INTC. All right. So INTC, um, you know, this one's been a lot of fun. I was, I was selling a lot on it back in here, you know, in these, these levels, especially when we were getting like, like these type of things outside the Bollinger Bands. Um, it's got plenty of energy. This has been a nice little pullback. You can notice it's starting to use the moving average as its support, right? So that's something to watch. Kind of back to what I said, kind of in a quiet and trending bull market, you start to see stocks and indices do this. Uh, as a weekly standpoint, though, it's pretty darn exhausted. So pulling back to 40 right here, pulling back to this moving average, look at look at it riding it here. We flipped, right? So we we're below it, below it, below it. We flipped. Now we've been riding it all the way up. So my tar target would be to see this thing pull back to 40 start to charge this thing up may come uh with earnings we'll see they're probably a couple of weeks out um or the overall market and uh monthly is is outside the bollinger bands just coming back in so again coming back down into here wouldn't be a big deal at all uh even coming as low as you know 35 34 wouldn't be a big deal so um so again if you're gonna if you're gonna do anything on it maybe hedge a little bit to the downside for yourself just to, uh, you know, be careful there. Um, WDC. Uh, this is pulled back nicely. It's come back right to this level of support in here, and it's come back to the lower Bollinger Band. It's got a lot of energy still at 50. So what this has done, remember we talked about, right? This going, one of the easiest ways to charge back and charge is to go back the way it came. So we burned out this energy to the upside. We've come back the way that it came and started to charge it itself back up. And so I'll be interested to see what the weekly looks like on this. Pretty exhausted on the weekly. So again, exhausted weekly chart, you know, pretty charged daily chart. Easier to go down than go up. If it does go up, it's going to be hard to hold that move. So if you're doing it short term and playing it, you know, probably in and out, right? Because it most likely will, will uh, you know, fade that move pretty easily. Um, from a monthly standpoint, looks like it is starting to release higher, but Again, kind of like what I said before, you can see this thing's released down to 50 and then charged back up again. So I wouldn't count anything on this till we start to get below 50 and see. But I, I think you're for right now, probably this upper Bollinger Band where it's about now 52-ish down to this, you know, 45, 40, you know, range is probably where this thing will probably stay range bound. Pulling back to 46 would be a pretty normal thing, 45-ish, um, judging by what this weekly chart showing you can see it's the the lowest it's been in three years so um all this market needs right now guys to go lower is a catalyst it needs an excuse that's it anything could be the excuse could be cpi ppi could be an earnings miss by like an apple or something like that you know apple's been missing almost you know every quarter for a little while now so it could be a lot of things that that could do that um all right, David, I've got just a few minutes left. I don't know if there's anything else that anybody wants me to look at. Um, if you guys are interested in this style of trading or if you want to learn how to use fractal energies for um, day trading and all that, we've got uh, actually a, a really you know inexpensive little course that we have on. It's got 50 modules in it, so it covers all this type of trading, buying options, selling options, all the you know front to back um for using fractal energies and, and with it you get the energy and everything and so or the indicator in that so um it's normally 97 bucks we're giving it to you guys for 79 dollars. so if you want it um i know david's got a link for it but i'll type it in just to the uh 
Uh, I'll drop it in there for you guys. Um, but for 79 bucks, guys, it's a steal. It's got everything you'll ever need to learn fractal energies with. So um, let me give you guys that. And I'm happy to answer any yeah, other just questions posted you have. It for you. Yeah. And any other questions anybody has, just go ahead and pop them in there while I'm doing this. You guys will see Doc, uh, Doc uh, spent a lot of time on this one. So you can uh, check that out. Yep. And if it makes sense for you, 79 bucks one time. And that's for life, guys. You get any changes we make to it, anything that we do to it, you get, uh, you know, you get that, uh, uh, those changes and everything. So um, we love to educate. We love to help people on their trading journal or journal journey. Um, if you have a trading journal, that's good. Uh, we fill ours out every day, but, uh, you know, on your journey and stuff, uh, these things like this, of course can help you. We, we'd love to do that. So appreciate you guys' time and thank you for, uh, spending time with me. And hopefully you guys kind of found something new to kind of look at, even if it's the Bollinger Bands and stuff of how they can work because they are a, a great indicator as well. So David, I'll turn it back over to you.